Chapter 7, Word Wars. School was the perfect place to launch a new word. And since this was a major historical event, Nick wanted it to begin in exactly the right class, 7th period language arts. Nick raised his hand first thing after the bell rang and said, Mrs. Granger, I forgot my friendle. Sitting three rows away, John blurted out, I have an extra one you can borrow, Nick. Then John made a big show of looking for something in his backpack. I think I have an extra friendle. I mean, I told my mom to get me three or four. I'm sure I had an extra friendle in here yesterday, but I must have taken it. Wait, oh yeah, here it is. And then John made a big show of throwing it over to Nick, and Nick missed it on purpose. Then he made a big show of finding it. Mrs. Granger and every kid in the class got the message loud and clear. That black plastic thing that Nick borrowed from John had a funny name, a different name, a new name, Frendel. There was a lot of giggling, but Mrs. Granger turned up the power in her eyes and swept the room into silence. And the rest of the class went by according to plan, her plan. As everyone was leaving after class, Mrs. Granger said, Nicholas, I'd like to have a word with you. And she emphasized the word, word. Nick's mouth felt dry and he gulped, but his mind stayed clear. He walked up to her desk. Yes, Mrs. Granger? It's a funny idea, Nicholas, but I will not have my class disrupted again. Is that clear? Her eyes were lit up, but it was mostly light, not much heat. Idea? What idea? asked Nick and he tried to make his eyes as blank as possible. You know what I mean, Nicholas. I am talking about the performance that you and John gave at the start of class. I am talking about this. And she held up her pen, an old maroon fountain pen with a blue cap but I really didn't have a friendle with me, said Nick, amazed at his own bravery. And hiding behind his glasses, Nick kept his eyes wide and blank. Mrs. Granger's eyes flashed and then narrowed and her lips formed a thin, hard line. She was quiet for a few seconds and then she said, I see, very well. Then I guess we have nothing more to discuss today, Nicholas. You may go. Thanks, Mrs. Granger, said Nick, and he grabbed his backpack and headed for the door. And when he was just stepping into the hallway, he said, and I promise I won't ever forget my friendle again. Bye. Chapter eight, Mightier than the sword. Two days later, the photographer came to take class pictures. The fifth grade picture would be taken last right after lunch. That gave Nick and his secret agents plenty of time, and they whispered something into the ear of every fifth grader. All the individual pictures had been taken, and finally it was time for the group picture. Everyone was lined up on the auditorium stage. Everyone's hair looked great and everyone was smiling. But when the photographer said, say cheese, no one did. Instead, every kid said, friendo, and they held, up, held one up for the camera to see. The photographer was out of film. So that shot was the only fifth grade group picture he took. Six of the fifth grade teachers were not pleased and Mrs. Granger was furious. 
No one had really wanted to make the teachers mad. It was just fun. It also got all the kids in the school talking about the new word. And when people pick up a new word, they say it all the time. The kids at Lincoln Elementary School liked Nick's new word a lot, but not Mrs. Granger. The day after the class picture, she made an announcement to each of her classes and she posted a notice on the main bulletin board by the office. Anyone who is heard using the word friendle instead of the word pen will stay after school and write this sentence 100 times. I am writing this punishment with a pen, Mrs. Granger. But that just made everyone want to use Nick's new word even more. Staying after school with a lone Granger became a badge of honor. There were kids in her classroom every day after school. It went on like that for a couple of weeks. One day near the end of seventh period, Mrs. Granger asked Nick to come talk to her after school. This is not detention, Nicholas. I just want to talk. Nick was excited. It was kind of like a conference during a war. One side waves a white flag and the generals come out and talk. General Nicholas Allen. Nick liked the sound of it. He stuck his head in Mrs. Granger's doorway after school. You wanted to talk with me? Yes, Nicholas, please come in and sit down. When he was settled, she looked at him and said, don't you think this friendle business has gone far enough? It's just a disruption to the school, don't you think? Nick swallowed hard, but he said, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just fun, and it really is a real word. It's not a bad word, just different. And besides, it's how words really change, isn't it? That's what you said. Mrs. Granger sighed. It is how a word could be made up brand new, I suppose, but the word pen, should it really be replaced by, by that other word? The word pen has a long, rich history. It comes from the Latin word for feather, penna. It started to become our word pen because quills, made from feathers, were some of the first writing tools ever made. It's a word that comes from somewhere. It makes sense, Nicholas. But friendle makes just as much sense to me, said Nick. And after all, didn't somebody just make up the word penna too? That got a spark from Mrs. Granger's eyes. But all she said was, then you are not going to stop this? And Nick looked right in her eyes and said, well, me and, I mean, a bunch of my friends and I took an oath about using the word and we have to keep our promise. And besides, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I like my word. Nick tried to look brave like a good general should. Very well then, I thought it would end up this way. Mrs. Granger pulled a fat white envelope from her desk drawer and held it up. This is a letter I have written to you, Nicholas. Nick held out his hand, thinking she was going to give it to him, but she didn't. I am not going to send it to you until all this is over. I want you to sign your name and put today's date across the back of the envelope. When you read it, whenever that may be, you will know it is the same letter and that I have not made any changes to it. This is weird, Nick said to himself, but to Mrs. Granger, he said, sure. And he signed his name in his best cursive and put the date under it. Then Mrs. Granger stood up abruptly and said, then that is all for today, Nicholas, and may the best word win. 
There was a frown on her face, but her eyes, her eyes were different, almost happy. And Nick was halfway down the hall before it hit him. She likes this war and she wants to win real bad. Walking to school the next day, Pete had a great idea. How about we see if we can get every kid in the whole fifth grade to go up and ask Mrs. Granger, can I borrow a friendle? You mean, Mrs. Granger, may I borrow a friendle, said Dave. Got to use good grammar. Don't want to upset dangerous Grangerous. Sounds good to me, said Nick. She can't keep everyone after school, can she? Almost 80 kids stayed after school with Mrs. Granger that day. They filled her room and spilled out into the hallway. The principal had to stay late to help and they had to arrange two special late buses to get all the kids home. And the next day, all the fifth graders did it again. And so did a lot of other students, over 200 kids. Parents called to complain, the school bus drivers threatened to go on strike, and then the school board and the superintendent got involved. And about this time, the principal of Lincoln Elementary School paid a little visit to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Allen. She wanted to talk to them about their son, the one in fifth grade, the one named Nick.